How's it going 3D printers? Andrew Sink here, and in this video, I've got another really interesting 3D printer that has a unique feature I've never seen before and I am excited to talk about. So, let's dive right in. The 3D printer I'm gonna be looking at today is the Focos Odin 5 F3. It's a really unique printer that ships almost entirely fully assembled and it has a folding frame. I've never seen a 3D printer that ships with a folding frame, but it is a really interesting approach to the problem of how do you make a beginner-friendly 3D printer that also doesn't require a lot of assembly. 3D printers have a lot of moving parts and fairly complex mechanical systems that usually need to be assembled by hand. This printer arrives fully assembled and it has some really interesting features that I want to talk about, including that folding frame. Before we dive too deep into this video, I'm trying something a little bit new. I've added this white piece of foam core behind the printer just to make it pop out a little bit. Uh, let me know if you like it or hate it, and I'm going to try and figure out a way to make the printer look distinct from all of the printers in the background and try to keep it from turning into one big mess of aluminum. One of the first things you notice when you look at this 3D printer is the aluminum extrusions on the gantry. They're not machined on one side, so they're actually flat. It's kind of a unique look, and it took me a second to realize this wasn't tape on both sides. There's only a piece of tape here, which covers the FFC, or flexible flat cable, which runs up on the Z and plugs in to power the X motor. So before we dive into the features or specs of this 3D printer, let's talk a little bit about what this printer is. The Odin 5 actually ships in retail-ready packaging like this. So this is the box that it ships in. And this looks like something that you could walk into Best Buy and purchase, right? Like this doesn't, it's not like most 3D printers which ship in a, a cardboard box with kind of like a monochrome logo on it. Uh, this has all the features and specs written on the box, which make it a little bit easier to understand what's inside. So this is the second retail ready package I've seen recently. The first was the Sculpto, which I purchased from a Joanne Fabrics. And this I actually got online from Focos. They sent this to me to take a look at. So this is really interesting because it sets an expectation with the buyer. When you buy something that comes in a box like this, you expect that it's going to be something you can just open the box and get right to working with, like a digital camera, not like a, an electronics kit where you know this is gonna be a little bit more of a project. And I think that's what Focus was really trying to do with the Odin 5. This is meant to be a pretty simple unboxing process. And it is. So before we do anything else, let's talk about the folding frame real fast. This printer shipped with everything assembled except for the filament spool holder, the FFC cables, which need to be plugged in, and the gantry is folded over on itself. There are four bolts at the base that we can remove. And once we removed them, you'll notice the gantry on this printer actually folds down. So it's kind of an ingenious solution. So there's no assembly required of the Z axis, the X entry, there's no belts to put on or anything like that. This printer, you basically unfold it to open it, then you take the bolts and put them into place. And once all four bolts are installed, the printer's ready to go. So that means the setup for this printer is only five or 10 minutes long. It's not really a kit printer like you would expect. So who is this aimed at? I think this is really aimed at people who want to get involved in 3D printing, but maybe don't want to go through a difficult setup process. So now that we've got the printer set up, let's talk a little bit about the specs of the machine. The Odin 5 is a 235 by 235 by 250 millimeter build platform. It's got two Z axes, so it has two motors and two threaded rods, a direct drive extruder, and a folding base, as well as a 3.5 inch color touchscreen. And the user interface almost feels like an operating system. It's awesome. I think it's Marlin based, but it is so clean and easy to use. I love it. The Odin 5 has silent stepper drivers. So while it's printing, there's no real mechanical noise. It just kind of moves around silently. Unfortunately, the part cooling fan that's front facing here is loud. And I mean like leaf blower loud. You can hear this thing from clear across the house. I was really surprised with how noisy it was. One of the big draws for a printer like this for me is that I can run it overnight, not really have to worry about any noise, but the part cooling fan really negates all of that silence from those stepper drivers, which is unfortunate because it's a relatively inexpensive part, and I think this problem could be solved in manufacturing with a better quality fan. The Odin 5 comes with a couple of pre-sliced models on the SD card, including one of the strangest models I have ever seen from a 3D printer ever, which is this. This is a bust of Shia LaBeouf. I have no idea why this was included. I can't remember the last time that I saw Shia LaBeouf in like anything. So it's just a weird, it caught me off guard. It's a figurine bust that's on the folder 
and I thought it was just a generic head, but sure enough, written on the base, it's got Shia in big letters. So if you're a big Shia LaBeouf fan, uh, this printer has got you covered. I ran a couple of test prints that come with the Odin 5, and generally speaking, they look pretty good. Most of the parts are sliced appropriately, so we don't have any, you know, 10 wall thickness with 0% infill parts that take 18 hours to make or anything like that. Uh, it comes pre-sliced with the Benchy that printed pretty well. It does have a couple of perimeters, I think it was five, so it does take a little bit longer than a normal Benchy, but it looks good. The quality is high, there's not a whole lot of visible banding or stringing, and the print looks pretty good. So here's the Ender 3 V2. There's a couple of differences between the two, but they're similar in price and they're similar in build volume. The big difference is being that this has a direct drive extruder. The Ender 3 has a couple of nice upgrades like the parts kit and things like that, um, and a nice little LCD. The Focus, the big difference being this printer doesn't require any assembly. This takes about an hour or so to put together. If you've done it before, maybe a little longer if it's your first printer. Uh, this really only has four bolts to hold it together. You snap the FFC cables in and it's done. So the difference really is, are you interested in building a kit and kind of learning how it goes? Or do you want a printer you can take out of the box and start printing with in about 15 minutes, which is what this offers. I'm a big fan of the Ender 3 style printers. They're modular, they're easy to maintain, they're easy to repair. The Odin 5 is very similar. I feel like this will be a fairly easy machine to maintain. My only concern are things like this FFC cable. Those tend to wear out over time. I've had a couple of printers that used FFC cables in the past and they tend to bend and they snap internally and they're a little bit harder to fix. On this printer, my big concern is this right here, which powers the, uh, the X motor. This goes down, folds over on itself, and then comes behind the printer. So if this cable fails, it's going to be a little difficult to peel the tape off, fold it in the right place, plug it in. You know, it's a bit more of an ordeal, whereas something like this, you're really just looking at a terminal that you can just unplug and plug straight back in. That's my only real big concern about long-term maintenance on this. Everything else looks pretty straightforward. Uh, the extruder is fairly simple. It's got a run-out sensor built into it. And this cover, which is bright yellow, the rest of the printer is black. This cover actually ships with the G-code file uh, to print another one built into the SD card. So you can just pop the SD card in and print this in whatever color you want. So let's talk about the SD card that this printer comes with because I wasn't prepared for an SD card that came with four gigabytes of files. The user manual is a 600 megabyte PDF and it comes with five different languages. So it took forever to load, it took forever to open. I was really surprised with how much data was on it, but it does come with a lot of pre-sliced files. So the G-code that's included, you get the Owls, Benchy, Shia LaBeouf, and a couple of other ones, including this fan cover, which you can just print out in a couple of different colors. If you want something that matches the printer, you can print it in black or whatever color you want. The Focus ships with what they call Focus Slicer. It's just a skinned version of Cura, and they only include a Windows version. There's also a text file on the SD card that says if you use a Mac, just go to ultimaker.com and download the latest version of Cura. At the $275 price point, I think this is definitely a machine worth thinking about if you're considering buying an Ender 3 and upgrading it, especially an Ender 3 V2. This comes with two threaded rods on the Z-axis, as well as two separate extrusions for the Y, so you have a much more stable build platform. It's got a direct drive extruder and filament runout built in and silent stepper drivers. So you're basically looking at buying an Ender 3 and doing all of those modifications you'd probably be doing anyways, and it's all built in. My biggest concerns with this machine are on the software side, so not having a Mac version of the software available means, for instance, I wasn't able to run their specific slicer. Does that mean that's going to be a problem for somebody who's willing to tinker? Not really, but again, back to the retail-ready packaging, if you buy this thing thinking it's ready to go, it could be a little bit upsetting to find out that you have to go download another software and build a profile for this machine instead of having one already built in. The fan is also a little bit of a problem for me. That part cooling fan, it's such a cheap part, but it brings the overall experience of running the printer way down just because the printer itself is mechanically silent. It's awesome to watch it printing. It makes no noise from the mechanical system, but that fan, it's, it's loud. So having either an upgrade come from the factory or having a user be able to upgrade it easily is probably something that should be considered. If you've used a printer like this before, leave me a comment down below and tell me about what you think about it. And I'd love to know if you're considering buying an Ender, is this the kind of machine that you're looking for? Are these the upgrades that are relevant to you? Or what would your dream printer look like in that $275 price range? As always, thanks for watching and have fun printing.